From restaurant menus to airplane boarding passes, business cards, digital marketing, concert tickets, and more. QR codes are used everywhere. You simply take your phone, open the camera, and direct it to the code, and just like that, you're given the link to open a website. Hey there, my name is Uma, and in this video, I'll be explaining the technology behind QR codes and how they work. Let's jump into it. A QR code is short for quick response code. It is a code that is quickly readable by a cell phone or a similar scanning device, hence the word quick in the name. Using a combination of spacing as a type of 2D matrix barcode, when the code is scanned, it conveys a multitude of information to a device. The QR code is similar to the regular barcode we are used to in the sense that they both convey information to a scanner. The major difference is that the regular barcode can only be read in one direction, from top to bottom, using the width of the lines to store information. Because of this, it can only store a small amount of information, usually alphanumeric formats, making it suitable for grocery store inventory management and other applications that require storing little to no data. The QR code, however, can be read in two directions, from top to bottom and from right to left, allowing it to store significantly more information, making it suitable for websites and tracking parts during manufacturing. The QR code was developed in 1994 by Masahiro Hara from the Japanese company Dental Wave. Prior to creating the QR code, companies used the traditional barcode to track items in manufacturing sites, but due to a shift from mass manufacturing of one type of product, to a more flexible production, more detailed production control was required at manufacturing sites. And as a result of this, developing a barcode that had increased capacity to store more information for a part was required. With only two team members, Hara came up with the idea of a square because their research showed that it was an easily distinguishable shape. Additionally, the shape allowed for both horizontal and vertical coding of information. A further advantage was that it also boosted the speed at which information could be read from the code, making it 10 times faster than regular barcodes. This combination was a success. Dental Wave made the QR code public in 1994 without maintaining patent rights, meaning that the technology was open source, free and available for anyone to use. By 1997, the first standards for QR code data encoding was made. Later on in 2000, QR codes were added to the ISO international standards, which are basically standards internationally agreed upon by experts. This meant a QR code would have the same meaning wherever you were, regardless of the type of device scanning it or the system that made the code, provided that they are using the proper standards. As the code got popular and smartphones cameras got better, people created apps that could read the QR codes. In 2017, with the release of Android 8 and iOS 11, Google and Apple integrated QR code into their cell phone native operating system, allowing them to scan the codes without an app just in time for 2020. Okay, enough history. Let's jump into how it works. The QR code has seven main parts. Each of these parts creates a sort of pixel pattern that looks similar to a crossword puzzle. Each element has a specific purpose that conveys certain information through the code. The first part of the QR code is the quiet zone. It is the empty border around the outside of the QR code. It is similar to the white space in design and helps improve comprehension. It enables the scanner to distinguish the QR code from its surroundings. The second part is the finder pattern or the detection markers. They are the three black squares in the bottom left, top left, and top right corners of the QR code. These squares allow the scanner to accurately recognize the code and read it at a high speed while indicating the direction that the code is printed in. The third part of the QR code is the alignment pattern. This is another small square contained somewhere near the bottom right corner. It ensures the QR code can be read even if it's skewed or at an angle or on a curved surface. The bigger the QR code, the more alignment pattern it needs. For example, this QR code only has one alignment pattern, but this bigger one has about six of them. The fourth part of the QR code is the timing pattern. This is an L-shaped line that runs between the three squares in the finder pattern. The timing pattern helps the reader identify individual squares within the whole code and helps the scanner determine how large the matrix is. The fifth part is the version information. With over 40 different QR code versions, these markers tell the QR code which one is being used. The sixth part is the format information. This pattern contains information about the error tolerance and the data mask pattern making it easier to scan the code. The final part is the data and correction keys. This is where the data is contained. 
It also shares the space with the error correction blocks that allow up to 30% of the code to be damaged without hindering comprehension. If any part of the code is destroyed, the scanner uses information from other paths to decode the destroyed parts. The data is usually encoded in the code using binary encoding. Each tiny square represents either 1 or 0. Summary of the encoding process is as follows. You get the data you want to encode. It may be a website URL, a phone number, or even a sentence. After that, you convert that to ones and zeros. After that, you figure out the encoding pattern you want to use. There's numeric, alphanumeric, byte, kanji, which is basically Japanese, and many more. Using the encoding pattern, you then convert the ones and zeros into a matrix grid, taking into consideration the error correction that involves polynomial division and other complicated math processes. If you're interested in learning more about how it works, I will leave a link to articles and videos that go into each step in greater detail. The QR code is an invention that is interesting, easy to use, and makes life easy for all of us. In the current era of contactless operations, the use of the code has skyrocketed, and by the looks of things, it's definitely here to stay. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.